Okay, now we're going to get into some obstructive disorders. The first um, umbrella term we're going to talk about is COPD, and that stands for Congestive Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, okay? COPD, like I said, it's an umbrella term, and it's talking about any lung disease that has limited airflow in and out of the lungs. Um, the symptoms of general COPD um, is a chronic cough, and typically they're going to be able to expectorate some sputum with that cough. Um, you also are going to start noticing some shortness of breath, um, dyspnea, wheezing, um, impaired excretory blood, um, I'm sorry, not blood flow, airflow. Um, so whenever they tr uh, try to breathe out, you're going to notice that it's actually difficult for them to do so. Um, COPD, whenever we're looking at the broad term, it's talking about um, infections like bronchiectasis um, or conditions like atelectasis, chronic bronchitis, um, and emphysema. Sometimes obstructive sleep apnea, cystic fibrosis, and asthma can also be considered COPD, especially when they are um, looked at in, a chronic, uh, in chronic conditions. Um, here's your little mnemonic device for COPD. Um, this is in your slides. You're welcome to print it out, look at it. It's um, really interesting. It's also in a book that's on your recommended um, purchase list um, for school. Um, but in COPD, these patients become easily fatigued. They have frequent respiratory infections, dyspnea, pursed lip breathing, chronic non-productive coughs, wheezing, prolonged expiratory time, um, orthopnic, um, they also can develop core pulmonality later in the disease, and they're usually pretty thin in appearance, and they also might use their accessory muscles whenever they breathe. So we're going to look at bronchiectasis first. Bronchiectasis is a chronic infection, and it's irreversible, um, and it's involving dilation of your bronchi and bronchioles. It can be caused by a bronchial obstruction um, by any kind of foreign body. It also can be caused by congenital abnormalities in the structure of the bronchi. Um, a lot of times, too, it can be caused because of exposure to toxic gases, whether they work in a factory or plant, um, or have just regularly inhaled um, toxic gases. Um, it also can be secondary to chronic pulmonary infections. But any time the airway is obstructed, some kind of infection might occur, which eventually might lead to tissue damages or changes that cause little sacs to collect pus. That pussy material or purulent material um, might eventually cause further airway obstruction, which can then lead to a lot more damage within the lungs. The signs and symptoms you're going to see with bronchiectasis is a chronic cough with copious purulent sputum. Um, they also might experience some um, hemoptysis um, that worsens with position changes. So if they lean forward, turn around, lay back, whatever, it might actually cause um, more of the hemoptysis to occur. Um, they also might be fatigued, have some weight loss, um, anorexia, maybe some dyspnea. Um, and here's a picture of um, the collection of pus um, that causes the airway to become widened and it also um, you know, is causing them to have ineffective um, ventilation. So to diagnose it, we're going to get a sputum culture. Now the thing that is most specific to bronchiectasis is how the sputum culture looks. Okay, So we want to get that sputum culture first thing in the morning because it's going to be the most effective. After they've coughed it up, their sputum is going to separate into three different layers. Um, and this is very interesting because you can actually see it. Um, the top part of, part of their sputum culture is really frothy and cloudy. The middle section is like clear liquid. It's almost like all of the water has separated away. Top part's frothy, middle part's like water. The bottom layer is really heavy, thick, and purulent. So it's like it just all separates into three different layers. And whenever you see that, you can already um, guess that they have bronchiectasis before we even send the sputum culture off. Um, a chest x-ray in bronchiectasis um, and bronchoscopy are going to end up showing an increased size of the bronchioles um, and possible atelectasis. And if you remember from looking at pneumonia, atelectasis is when the alveoli become filled with pus to the point where they burst and collapse. Um, and you also might start noticing some pulmonary changes as well. We want to get a, a culture and sensitivity of their sputum um, and probably do some pulmonary function testing as well. The goal of treatment with of bronchiectasis is to help prevent further infections and reduce inflammation. Like we said, it's a chronic problem, um, but we do want to prevent further damage as much as possible. 
We want to drain the purulent material to aid in their um, just respiratory efforts. Um, give them antibiotics, um, some bronchodilators, um, mucolytics, humidify their secretion so that they get thinned out and they can actually breathe easier. We also might do some surgery if the bronchiectasis is contained to one area. As a nurse, we can perform postural, postural drainage to help get out that excess sputum that is forming within their lungs. Um, and we want to keep the patient in each position for 10 to 15 minutes in order for that position to be effective. We also can do chest PT or chest percussion um, and vibration just to help loosen up those secretions and help them expel them out. Um, oral hygiene is really important to perform after every treatment so that we're not allowing the infected sputum to remain inside of their mouth uh, because then that could eventually cause a dental infection um, and also more systemic infections as well. All right, let's look at atelectasis. Um, atelectasis, like we've already looked at with pneumonia, is um, a symptom, and it's a coll the collapse of the alveoli, which is our main um, area for gas exchange within our lungs. This can happen as a result of the excess secretions within those alveoli. It might involve a small portion of the lung, or it might involve an entire lobe of the lung. If it gets really extensive, it could actually take out an entire lung. Um, it's caused by aspiration of mucus, fluid, or air. It also can be caused by compression um, because of tumors, enlargement of the heart, and aneurysm, enlargement of your chest lymph nodes, and because of prolonged bed rest. Whenever a patient is lying down for an extended period of time, it's putting all that pressure on the lung and not allowing it to expand properly. At that point, the alveoli aren't able to expand the way they need to, and they can collapse. Um, at that point, the patient is unable to really breathe deeply or to be able to cough to raise up those secretions. Um, and so it's very um, serious that we you know, notice these things um, as quickly as possible. The signs and symptoms of atelectasis um, change depending on the degree um, of um, involvement in your alveoli. Um, the larger areas, if they are infected, um, infected, affected, I'm sorry, um, can produce some cyanosis, and that's because of the poor perfusion that's occurring as a result of the lungs collapsing. Also, you might notice a fever, some pain, some trouble breathing, um, increased pulse and respiratory rate. A lot of that is because your body is trying to overcompensate for the lack of oxygen um, that you're not getting, um, or yeah, the amount of oxygen you're not getting um, because of the collapse of the alveoli. You also might start noticing some crackles in the breath sounds, and a lot of that is especially if um, consolidation had occurred where that fluid collected in the alveoli, and all of a sudden the alveoli collapsed, that fluid spills into the lungs, um, and you're gonna, you're gonna hear those crackles because of the accumulation of fluid. Um, diagnostic tests that we can do to see if they've had, alveol uh, had atelectasis in the alveoli, we can get a chest x-ray, and that's going to show dense shadows that are going to signal collapsed tissue. Um, An ABG is going to show um, abnormal O2 sats, um, or abnormal oxygen levels within the ABG, and then just a peripheral um, pulse ox is also going to show decreased oxygenation um, to the peripheral tissues and capillaries. Um, the way to treat it is to improve ventilation as much as possible. We want to suction out the excess fluid and mucus, um, encourage deep breathing and coughing, especially to bring up all that excess secretions. Um, we want to give them bronchodilators and humidify um, the air as much as possible. We also want to present supplement supplementary oxygen to help um, increase the perfusion and ventilation efforts. Here's a picture of atelectasis. Um, you see the dense white areas that's signaling to us um, that portions of the lung have collapsed. All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back.